The recipes, views, and opinions expressed in this channel are solely those of the speaker. They do not reflect, collaborate, or substitute the views and opinions of a medical health professional. Please consult a professional with any dietary concerns and inquiries prior to trying the recipes. Welcome to the channel. Hey guys, thank you for clicking on this video to get my buttery creamy mushroom stew recipe. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you are returning, hey there. The goal of this channel is to provide foods that are nutritious and satisfying without breaking your calorie banks or sacrificing flavor. Now, this dish is my breakfast dish. Yes, you heard that right, breakfast dish. It is extremely low in calories and fats. It is light and filling and is a great way to start the morning. It is filled with high protein, potassium, vitamin A, iron, fiber, and calcium. And these are all great nutrients to help your body jumpstart your day. Now the concept of this recipe was birthed by watching YouTuber Nanaba's Kitchen. I love, love, love her dishes. So definitely check her website out. Not website, but her channel out. I was blown away by the idea that in West African cooking, they use nuts as a main ingredient in stews especially complex flavored stews. So I borrowed the manner of preparation that they use for making most of the stew dishes and that technique did not disappoint. I am a fanatic of authentic traditional cooking that tends to be ragged and always produces masterpieces. So to find out how, let's jump into this dish. So to start us off, we will be using some cremeni mushrooms. Now, I prefer cremeni mushrooms because of the taste and the flavor, and it works great as a meat substitute for me. Now, you can use other kinds of mushrooms. I have tried baby, I think it's baby bell mushrooms, and they kind of had the same thing, but I stuck with my cremeni. But you are open and welcome to use any kind of mushrooms that you would like. Just be cognizant of the fact that it's going to change flavor. So we're going to go ahead and chop our mushrooms into quarters and remove any pieces that might not be um, conducive for eating. And then once we have done that, we're going to go ahead and wash our mushrooms very well. Now some people prefer not to wash mushrooms. I prefer to wash them. Um, it's just a thing of making sure that I do not have soil and dirt and that kind of thing in my dishes. So once you have that washed, the next thing you're going to do is um, grab your onion. Now we're going to go ahead and chop your onions up, um, not necessarily mince them, but just chop them up. And that's the only two ingredients that we're going to be starting up with. Next, go ahead and grab a Dutch oven or cooking pot. If you already have watched my videos on this channel, you will know that I am always cooking with a Dutch oven because it is safe and burn proof. If you're one of those people that actually burns meals, um, the likelihood of actually disposing of a burnt meal when you have actually cooked on a Dutch oven is slim to none. You can always recover from it. So I'm always investing in a Dutch oven. But however, if you do not have a Dutch oven, just get any kind of pot. And then into that pot, you're going to go ahead and put in your onions with your olive oil. I use raw Mar Moroccan olive oil for its um, great nutrients as well as the fact that um, it has gone through very little processing. So it, it does have a very bold and pungent flavor, but I love it. Um, but you can use any olive oil that you would like. And then um, into your Dutch oven, you will be putting in your mush, sorry, mushed. You will be putting in your um, washed cremeni mushrooms. Now, if you know anything about cooking mushrooms, they do uh, decrease in size as they cook, so they kind of sweat it out. And the whole idea is to sweat out all the water that is in the mushrooms. 
So while the mushrooms are cooking, let us talk about my spice of the day, and that is anise seeds. Now anise seeds have a very pungent smell. It has more like a licorice sweet flavor to taste. Um, so if you've ever tasted something, well, if you've ever eaten licorice, you know what that tastes like. Now, what I noticed about anise seeds, or at least how I got introduced to anise seeds, was on a trip to India. Um, in the restaurants, at the end of every meal, I was presented with a bowl of anise seeds mixed with sugar. Now, this is their equivalent of a mint. Um, in Indian stores, you will find uh, sugar-coated fennel seeds. Um, and you can also buy that um, on Amazon, and I tend to keep it at the house um, as my mints. So if you come to my house, I will serve you some of that. Um, but and, and I know I just said two different things. I said anise and fennel. It's the same thing. So uh, anise is the annual version of the plant. Well, the fennel is the perennial version of the plant. Now the difference is the anise seed is more pungent, is the most pungent of the two. In terms of its nutrients and properties, it is a great antifungal, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory um, type uh, spice. Um, it assists with digestive issues like hiccuping or flagellants or what is known as gas. Um, it is also known or said to be uh, a good uh, way to balance your sugar levels. Um, it alleviates symptoms of depression and menopause. So ladies, there are remedies out there for when we get to our golden days. So you might want to bookmark a fennel seed or an sea seed as part of your regimen if you do get to that point. Um, it is also said to have great uh, boosting properties for reproductive organs both in males and females. Now this spice falls into my old spice category, sorry, my old wisdom category for the old wisdom is always tested and true. So it is over 4,000 years old and was first cultivated in Egypt and in the Middle East. Um, and this was around the time when agriculture was coming into fruition amongst, you know, us humans during those times. Now, back in the days, Romans and Germans loved it so much that they would bake it into cakes. The Germans took it a step further where they strongly believed in its properties that they would bake it in their household bread. So everything they ate that was bread-like had some fennel seeds or anise seeds in it. Now in modern days, um, it actually is used um, to remedy things like stubborn coughs and in some throat, lo throat lozenges you will actually find them in there. Now you have noticed that there is a seed version and a star version of the anise seeds. If you have not, then I am letting you know. <laughs> I'm this is your memo that there is two versions of it. Now I am using the anise star seed version in my recipe. Now the difference between the two is that the anise star is actually a more mature version of the fennel or the 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 regular seed. Um, it is much more stronger so I tend to limit how much I'm using it because it can dominate a dish. Um, so if you are going to be using it just stick to the quantities or at least test them out to make sure that they're good for you. And that is the anise seed. So let us return to the dish. So while the mushrooms are on the stove it's time to start prepping your tomato ba base sauce and you will be needing some Roma tomatoes to start you off on this one. Go ahead and get those washed and chopped up and put into your food processor or blender if you have one. next thing you're going to add into that is some garlic cloves. I usually add three but if you're one of those people that was really not a fan of garlic just go ahead and add uh, as much as you want or limit how much you want to put in there. 
Okay, the next thing you're going to be adding is the anise seed. And then also into that you will be putting your ginger powder. Um, you will also add some cinnamon sticks. Um, if you do not have cinnamon, cinnamon sticks, then regular cinnamon powder will work. Um, just use about a quarter of that. And then last but not least, um, well, actually, before we get to the last, you can go ahead and add some habanero powder to it. If you like, this is absolutely optional. I just like having my dishes hot, so I add some habanero to it. And then the last ingredient that you will be adding into the food process processor are cloves. So I use about six cloves and um, into the mix. And go ahead and blend that until you get to a soup-like consistency. Once you're done with that, just go ahead and set that aside and it's time to chuck on all mushrooms. Now, if the mushrooms water has completely evaporated, go ahead and turn off the heat and remove the cooked mushrooms from the pot and put it into a separate bowl because we'll be adding that back in later. Once you have cleared out your Dutch oven of your mushrooms, then it's time to cook our tomato base. So into the same Dutch oven you were using, go ahead and put in some oil. And this time around I'm using palm oil. Now palm oil is a West African oil um, that does give you that um, fish-like flavor in my book. Um, so if you're one of those people who's looking for a fish base, um, palm oil for some reason brings that out in a dish. Um, it's very nutrient and very healthy for you. So if you've never tried it, um, just give it a try. I will give you a heads up. It's a very strong smell. So if you're not used to it, um, it, it, it might revolt you to begin with. But hang in there because it, if you look up what palm oil does, it is a very good oil to have handy. Once you've added your palm oil, then go ahead and add uh, the rest of the onions that you had. So half of the medium onion that you had chopped up, just go ahead and add that in. And we're going to go ahead and cook the onions until they're brown. Now, warning, the oil, the palm oil is highly volatile, so be very careful about putting any water in it um, or... Um, yeah any water in it because it, it will splatter on you very fast so be careful about that so once you have the onions browned browned not browned browned then go ahead and add in your tomato base along with um, your, your salt your sea salt so I usually measure how much salt I'm putting in a dish and I try to limit it to one uh, teaspoon for every dish that I cook Go ahead and mix that uh, soup or tomato base and what we're going to be doing is lowering our heat and cooking it until that soup base has completely evaporated and become a paste. Um, and that's basically, that's pretty much the state, the state we're going to be looking for it to get to, is a paste-like state. So while the stew is cooking, the tomato stew, or not stew, but tomato sauce is cooking. Go ahead and grab a food processor, and we are going to be blending uh, one cup of cashews in it. So you're going to be adding one cup of cashews along with one cup of water. You're going to be blending it until you have a milk-like consistency. So you want to get it as smooth as you possibly can. If you can't, that's absolutely fine. So once the sauce has completely evaporated, then we're going to go ahead and add this cashew milk into the sauce and stir it. Now stir it gently because now you've added a thickening agent into this dish and so the idea, so the splattering possibilities are very high. And then as long, and also the next thing you're going to be adding into it is fresh basil. If you do not have fresh basil, you can use dry basil. That works just fine. And we're going to go ahead and continue to cook it on low heat until most of the water has evaporated. 
Now, once the water has kind of dissipated and you will be stirring it as it goes. Caution, caution, caution. This thing will boil like a volcano. So you will see bubbles. It will pop, pop, pop. You need to be very careful and obviously use a uh, splutter guard if you need to um, when you're mixing it. If it's popping so hard, add water to it. The idea is to try and um, at least cook the nuts through as much as possible. So just go ahead and add some water to it and let um, that uh, bubbling effect to calm down. Once that's happened, go ahead and add your cooked mushrooms back into the stew along with some more water. And we're going to heat that up until it bubbles up again. And when it does, you're going to be adding in the last thing, which is our baby spinach. Now you can use regular spinach. I usually buy bagged because it's cheaper and faster to access. However, uh, regular spinach just works just fine. And when you have done add your spinach, um, all you're going to be waiting for is for the spinach to wilt and that takes no time. So you're not going to be cooking this for long, it's just adding it in, waiting for that wilted effect on the spinach and turn off your heat. Of course, taste for seasoning to make sure that it has all the appropriate seasoning. Uh, otherwise, at this point, your dish is done. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my buttery, creamy mushroom stew. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new recipes on YouTube. Please be sure to sign up on my website, imcookingwithnamia.com, to get full recipe details. You can also purchase this downloadable recipe card on my website along with any other of your favorite recipes from my channel and I will see you on our next video.